Hi there, folks. Welcome to WP Tonic. This is episode 116. We've got a fantastic guest today, folks. I say it every time, but our guests are always fantastic. And we've got a specially angenic guest, Angie Meekers, joining us. And Angie's going to be talking about the, all about email marketing and how it should be done right. That wasn't too bad an introduction, Angie, wasn't it? Would you like to kind of pan it out a bit more and tell the listeners um, a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. So um, so I'm Angie Meeker, like you said, and I have been um, working in the WordPress space for about 12 years now, and prior to that I used to be a pastor. Um, and really just in the past year or so have begun to transition to really – um, helping businesses with their more with their content and their and even more specifically with their email marketing to help um, drive their revenue uh, rather than simply just building websites because what I found was people would they'd say I need a website when really that that was just kind of a symptom of what they really needed <laughs> and and so uh, and and I don't and so that's how I kind of got where I am. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish I could say that. Um, uh, John, <laughs> my beloved co-host, like to introduce yourself. He's gone Kojak, folks, as well. Sure thing. My name is John Locke, and I run a small WordPress consultancy here in Sacramento called Lockdown Design. Have you just decided to disguise yourself, John, or was it just an impulse? Uh, it was just an impulse. I'm not... Uh, hiding from the law or anything like that. Oh, so. right. I just thought just... I would ask. <laughs> right, Angie. Um, so let's start off with email marketing. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. Where do you think people initially, to start this in conversation off, Angie, where do you think people start to go down the wrong path? You know, I think what... And I, and, and I tell customers and, and folks this all the time is that I feel like people, they don't really start with their customers' goals in mind. They start with, they start with what do I need to sell or what's my pitch? What do I need people to do? And instead, they need to start with what does my, what's my customer's goal? In, not in life. That sounds kind of cheesy even though in some ways that's true, finding out like what is it that my customer is really trying to accomplish and how can I help them meet those goals. And when you begin to really help your customers understand that, number one, you, you understand them and you understand their problems and you understand how to solve those problems, then, then you can start really planning some email marketing strategies that work. But most people, they just, you know, they throw a form up on their site and they'll they'll email to their list when when they have a sale going on, and that's it. That's yeah, the end of it. that's a great point, Angie. I did, think, you know, God did give us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Right. Exactly uh, right. And. Um, what I mean by that, folks, is um, you should really listen to the wants and needs of your client base and then give them information that they would find useful, appealing, and they might keep on receiving your email. Um, but it's the volume. How do you... I, I do kind of clean every, like, four or five months... But it's just the volume of email, and I think people think, well, I should just not bother with this anymore. But the yeah. but the facts don't seem to support it. Like, can you give us any they insights? Don't. They really about, don't. Give us some <laughs> insights about what still supports email as a pretty effective platform of communication. Yeah, I think I think the challenge is that I think most people who attempt email marketing, they either they do it way too much or they don't do it enough and so they never they never really experience the sweet spot where customers are really engaging with your content because they're not expecting you send too, too few too little too little and so they're not expecting you they don't you don't stay on top of their mind and so you're not doing this thing where you're building this relationship with them or you you just send too many times in which case they just get annoyed with you but that's that number between too little and too much it it's somewhere between 4 and 16 times a month and most people wouldn't think that most people would think well too much is definitely 
going to be like maybe four times a month when really if you're not staying in touch more than that you're falling you're falling out of their um, radar really off their radar <clears throat> and you'll see that reflected in your open rates and your click-through rates if you're not keeping in touch often enough um, because you don't become important to them it doesn't be, you don't become valuable to them if you're not sending enough that's fascinating Angie really because I do try and send one really quality email which John also receives hopefully he thinks it's reasonable and uh, um, but I only do it once a month so number one suggestion is you know think about maybe sending out more regularly Tip yeah one. even if it's even if what you send is not as full as what you might send once a month breaking it up into four times a month would be you would end up with something more valuable to your readers than if you just waited and sent it all at once so shall we go on to Google and how they've you know and the marketing folder and how they're kind of you see a lot of hardcore marketers that really got rid of all kind of apart from maybe one image they've really gone back to really very plain text messaging to try and avoid the, the dreaded marketing folder in Google Gmail can you maybe explain a bit of the re how email marketing has changed and your views about all this Angie so I think what I think you're right I think you do see a lot of marketers moving just to the simple plain text emails for that reason but I think you I also see the really effective email marketers not giving up on the image based um, emails and instead just plain educating their people about how to you know go over to the promotions tab and drive it in drag it in the inbox so that um, so that they still they still get to view it that way it's like they don't want to give up that the powerful medium that is images just uh, because it takes a little more work to educate people on how to how to go into the promotions tab and grab it and so you see people on their uh, on their thank you pages and their confirmation pages and even a follow-up email saying you know little you see I think the best ones to me the the uh, best converting ones I've seen to me actually have little gifts where you see the mouse go over to the promotions tab and drag it over to where it needs to be and that sort of thing so um, but it is it's you know it's changing quickly I know even recently um, I know MailChimp and several other Aweber I know has done it and I think Constant Contact too if you're sending from a Gmail address if your email marketing is sending from a excuse me a Gmail address they're not letting it go through they're they are um, requiring basically that you have a, a top-level domain in your email address and a verified top-level domain and that you're sending from that and again that's really just branding and, and to combat spam all of that together so uh, I guess that's my I don't like I said, the the effective email marketers I see, they're not giving it up. They're not going to say so quickly, just we're only going to send plain text emails. Instead, they're they're working on um, educating people on how to continue grabbing their emails out of promotions. Yeah, I think that's great information. Now, Angie, let's get to the meat of this. You know, um, getting people to sign up. You know. You got any insights? Because I'm trying on the WP Tonic, and, we're, and me and John are going to revamp things. Uh, um, it's pretty hard to get these people to sign up for the great email that I will send to them, and the knowledge yeah. that I'm going to give them for free, Angie. But they just don't seem to be interested at the present moment. Got any tips, insights, knowledge? Yeah, you know, and I think it in a lot of ways it, it continues to just come back to starting with your customers goals in mind and for the for the longest time you could just throw up an opt-in that said you know subscribe for the latest news and tips and and people would subscribe to that but it seems like that is it, it can still be really effective but the more specific you can get with the offer that you're giving people the the better off you'll be so for example if you guys are doing a, um, a podcast with a guest who a guest who's going to talk all about SEO then pr even prior to the podcast offering hey subscribe um, subscribe like on the post for that week's podcast uh, that's going to be about SEO 
subscribe and we'll send you an SEO checklist. The more specific you can make your offers for, for the type of content that your reader is reading, the better your conversion rates will be. And so, and really great examples of this, and I do where I do work with Optin Monster, so I'm not uh, I just have to say that ahead of time, but the the examples on the optinmonster.com blog, whether you're a fan of pop-ups or light boxes and that sort of thing or not, the examples of how you can increase your subscribers by offering what they call content upgrades. Lead pages calls them, I think, lead boxes or lead links or something like that. Um, that what I'm seeing right now is that's where the sweet that's the sweet spot right now in email marketing. The companies who are taking advantage who are really drilling down to the piece of content that their customers are reading and offering a content based or offering value based subscription in that post specific to that piece of content, that's the people who we're we're seeing their conversion rates go 450, 550, 1600 percent increases. Wow. When they're offering so, that specific content. And you have to do it often. I mean, you can't, we see, you know, uh, like we'll have people say, how can we increase our conversions? And I look and they have one opt-in on their whole site. It's like over in their sidebar and that's it. And I'm like, well, let's let's get you up to seven and then we'll talk. So you need one here, maybe a slide in at the bottom, one of those floating bars at the top, an exit opt-in, a full screen when they first come. You know, seven. Most people, this is a sales cycle. Most people have to be offered something seven times before they're educated enough and before that offer is top of mind enough for them to make a decision. So if you're offering one opt-in over in the sidebar, it's not. It's just not going to happen. Like it's not. It's psychology. It's not going to happen. They're not going to subscribe when it's just one little offer. I'm sad, Angie. You played me feel <laughs> sad. Uh, um, so um, that's my weekend filled. Um, <laughs> pop up boxes everywhere. It's going to be like a, a tank trap, folks. Uh, um, so that's my weekend gone. Um, so, so. Well, the good thing is if you do it right, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to feel like the visitor came to your site and there were 15 pop-ups as soon as they hit your site. If you do oh, it Angie, right within oh, the content, they're gonna be. You're like, I don't even gonna care. Be pop-ups everywhere, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, we tend to think, you know, it's like a bad craftsman with the best tools. But do you actually think? You know, it won't. You know, you've got to have some strategy in the things that we've just discussed. But having something like Optin Monster or Convert Kit or Fry Frames, um, something that's designed to put it, you know, your your conversions on a little bit of a steroid. Do you think it really helps to invest a little bit of money in a tool like that? Yeah, I do. And you know, I. So years ago, this is probably six, six or I don't know, maybe even ten years ago at this point. Back when pop-up domination was new to WordPress, do you, do you, do you guys remember that a long time ago? Oh, I've so I installed that on one of my own sites, and I saw years ago. This was before these other services even existed. I saw my own subscriptions increase sixteen hundred percent in a month. Because of this one little pop-up, and I was like, "That is nuts, people!" I thought people hated pop-ups. Why are they? You know, and I just thought from that point on, I thought, you know what? In in the WordPress space and and with developers, we hate pop-ups. So we think everyone else hates them, but the numbers just don't prove that out. And especially with the way that each one of those services you mentioned are able to offer pop-ups now they can do it with you know you clicking on a link or an image within the content and that's what's o that's what opens up the the offer so you're not seeing these pop-ups all over the site though certainly you should have those too <laughs> but the real power is when the offers right in the middle of the content just to kind of finish off before we go for our break Angie it's a bit like um, the advice um, that OptiMonster gives, you know, you get a lot of sites where as soon as you enter the home page, the pop-up appears, and I, I did that for a while, but at least now, it actually comes up the pop-up. It doesn't convert, Angie. That's why my whole weekend's going to be taken <laughs> up with this. Um, but um, at least it pops up when you leave in the page. It just doesn't pop up when you soon as you see it, because that really doesn't work, does it, Angie? Well, not when it first, I mean, 
it's true. The, the average person, if you if you set a pop up as soon as they get to your site, they're just going to click out of it because they came there for a reason. They have something they were intending to do, so get out of their way and let them do it. Um, but those exit pop ups, um, they work and they work really well. They they should work. Uh, if your if your copy is written well, if the offer is good, they should work really well, and that's pr that's true. I would say across platforms, like that's not specific to Optin Monster, but um, a lot of uh, other services, you can see the same thing bearing out in their case studies. Um, oh dang, I had something I wanted to tell you, and I forgot what it was. Oh, I have that every, Maybe I'll every remember minute on the break. Saying, gee, but there we go. Um, we're gonna go for our first break, folks. But before we go there, remember, folks. WP Tonic, we're a maintenance company and we sort out all this stuff for you. We do the maintenance, we um, do small fixes, we've got unlimited packages for 69 bucks a month. Not exactly going to break the bank, folks. And you get the delightful um, services of myself and my humour. So keep that in one mind. So we're going to go for our first break, folks, and um, John's going to take over and we're going to delve deeper into the world of email marketing. Be back in a second, folks. We're coming back, folks. My beloved co-host is going to take over for a while. Off you go, John. Thanks, Jonathan. So, Angie, I want to come back to something you said previously when you were talking about hitting the sweet spot with how often you're sending email. Because I encounter that myself. If uh, an email list that I'm on, if they haven't emailed me for like six months and suddenly I get an email from them, I'm like, I don't even remember subscribing to this. I'm going to unsubscribe. That's right. And if you bombard people like every day, uh, that can get old too. How do businesses find that sweet spot and why is that important as far as building a relationship yeah uh, really they just have to try it <laughs> there's no way there's no way to know really before you start out I mean you can look at industry averages for your particular industry and see what are the average number other marketers are sending and your email marketing platform typically can help you get some of that information get some of those stats but really you just you just have to try it you have to try start with four a month and go from there and try going up from there and when your open rates um, and your click-through rates really start decreasing it can mean one of two things you know and uh, either that's too much or you're finally sending enough information that you're beginning to weed out the people who are not interested in buying. So your open rates and your click-through rates decreasing, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, your email marketing, obviously it has to be connected to whatever your end conversion, your end goal was. And so what you should see, you should see with any sort of sales funnel, and your email marketing obviously feeds into that, you should see those open rates and click-through rates decreasing a bit as you... Um, are moving that person through your sales funnel but at the same time that that's decreasing you should begin to see your sales increasing because the people who are sticking around as you send more should be converting but again you without testing you don't really you don't know you can't I mean that's the thing I think a lot of businesses they're afraid to just try they think I'm gonna screw it up if I start with four I'm gonna screw it up and if I go up to five the world's gonna end and it's not gonna end like you might lose some subscribers along the way but you have to do it you have to go through that process to figure out what works and what doesn't work no absolutely I agree with you that uh, you know the people that do stick around you know you're gonna convert a certain number of them not all of them but you're gonna convert some of them into paying customers so you know we all work with you know smaller businesses um, and one of the things that you probably run into is a lot of these businesses they feel it's a challenge for you to get them to embrace tools like email marketing social media anything like that that that's new how do you get businesses to overcome that inertia when it comes to learning you know new tools for online marketing and email marketing so I that's a really good question, isn't it? I think that um, I think two things. I think there are a lot of businesses that they they think they want to learn to do it themselves when really they don't need to be doing it themselves. They really they need to understand that they need a 
they need a partner to come along and do those technical things for them because that's not their business. It's not their primary business. They sell shoes and they need to be about selling or making shoes. They don't need to be spending hours a week trying to figure out how to learn how to set up an autoresponder campaign. And I think I think there are a lot of businesses that are kind of on that edge where the owner or maybe a small team of people are transitioning to maybe I can trust a partner in email marketing. Um, maybe I want to continue to do it myself and really helping them understand that passing that work off to someone else who knows it better than they do will increase revenue for them in the long run. But that's that's a trust thing and that's kind of hard for businesses. I think uh, it's hard for business owners a lot of times who are used to just doing everything them, themselves. Um, as far as how, how do you get them to see the, re the value in it, I think that case studies are probably the best, the best thing that you can do to help them. You, you, again, going back to various types of opt-ins and things on your site, it's one thing to tell to tell a business you should be email marketing and you should be doing X, Y, and Z with email marketing, but to show them this business that is in a similar niche to you did these things and increased their subscribers, which increased their sales. You know, that's it's it's proof people are looking for. Excuse me, um, proof and 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 being able to see a clear path to how that's going to impact their bottom line. If you just tell them, you know, I think people do this a lot with social media. They're, they just say, business, business, you need to be doing it. You have to be on all the socials. And without showing them a clear path to how that's going to increase their revenue, businesses are, they think it's, it's uh, snake oil. And I think email marketing can be the same way, but it's, it's easier to prove email marketing, I think, than it is to prove social in a lot of ways. No, I totally agree with that too. I I, I think that email marketing, uh, there's a reason why it's it's still around. Yeah. Um, it it is a lot easier to show the correlation be between email marketing and sales, and I think it's a little more unquantifiable with social media. In both things, you're trying to like establish a relationship with the customer to where they're familiar with you. Um, so you know, it's interesting that you said with case studies is is the best way to get people to try like these new tools because I did look at your site and and I noticed some of the case studies that, that you were talking about and one of the things that you were talking about is uh, people businesses developing their own voice and how um, you know in, in in some cases people try and be something that they're not because they see other people being successful with it right um, how can people discover like what they're voice should be when they're sending out emails or any type of marketing? Mm -hmm. So we um, we have a quick process that we run through with clients where where we ask um, we ask them like what uh, I'm, I want to tell you the process without giving it all away. <laughs> well, just, yeah, just don't, don't give me the secret general, sauce. A, oh, just. Yeah, I know. So in general we, we have a process that we work through where we, where we ask people, you know, who who Describe to us who you say you are. Um, wh what's the what's the tone that you speak to each other within your company with? What's the tone that you speak to your customers with? How do you want your customers to feel when they've interacted with you? And you know, it's interesting. I know one of those case studies that we mentioned on the site is with a law firm, and they wanted to be like the law firm that was all up in your face. Like we're gonna we're gonna grind your the plaintiff or I don't know what the words are now, the, I guess the plaintiff into the ground because they were def defense attorneys. So, um, but when we talked to them, they didn't, that didn't match who they said they wanted to be at all. They wanted to be like, um, like the loving uncle who kind of came along the defendant and said everything's going to be okay and, and that sort of thing. And it wasn't until we really began to ask them, who do you want to be? How do you want people to feel when they've interacted with you that that even began to come out and we said you can't be that in your face law firm because it's not who you are you can pretend to be that but it's not gonna work your marketing is gonna fall flat because that's not who you say you are so I think um, I think those are for us those are powerful questions to ask who do who do other people say you are um, what tone do you communicate internally how do you what tone do you communicate to your to your customers and how do you want people to feel once they've interacted with you. Um, 
and and when you begin to look at those, then you can begin to really craft what's the tone that you're going to talk with, what's the tone you're going to speak with in your emails. No, and I I, I I totally get that. That it's you know when you understand better like who you are as a business, it's easier for you to put out that voice, um, you know the authentic voice that that you should be. Uh, representing instead of like what you think you should be representing and yeah. how how important is it for businesses to feel confident in what their unique offering is and how they're expressing that you know to the world well I mean it, how important is it for them to feel confident in it I I mean it, it's in many ways everything uh, because if they're if they're not um, you know here's what I think happens is when they don't when you don't really own who you are and how you are going to interact with your people your i hate to say your tribe but your people you know i always say your people how you're going to interact with your people when you don't really inter, when you don't own it it just it just comes out like you're just trying another thing like you're just trying to make like you think you should be doing this email marketing thing and so you're just gonna try it and there's no real personality in it there's nothing to really reach out and grab people and it doesn't you don't have I mean you don't have to be the um, like showstopper in order to do that like if you're if you're a nerdy shoe cobbler and you get really geeked out about being a shoe cobbler do it I mean own that be that nerdy shoe cobbler and and be willing to really go deep down into that hole as as you communicate with with your people, you know, don't try to fancy it up if if, <laughs> if that's not who you are, you know. I so that's I guess what I have to say about that. No, that, may, that makes total sense. Um, so I'm gonna switch it up. This is something we always ask um, our spotlight guests. Uh, you know, we always ask them, "What are your favorite motivation and business books?" And three of the books that you mentioned were 10X mm -hmm. by Grant Cardone, The Closer Survival Guide, also by Grant Cardone, right. and Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. So yeah. tell me a little bit about each of those. So the, okay, so the 10X rule, we first, I, I first kind of came across this book probably two and a half years ago in my, mas in my mastermind with Curtis McHale and yeah. some other folks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and they mentioned it, Curtis mentioned it at the time he was reading it, and, um, and, and I wish I would have paid more attention to it at the time because it, there, there are some really important truths in that book that I think the majority, and I really mean the majority, of folks in the WordPress space totally miss. And, and, it's, and so a few weeks ago at, Word, at Northeast uh, Ohio, the Word Camp up there, mm -hmm. I, I talked about this a little bit. I said, you know what, we aim for, we talk about in the WordPress space, like if we can make it to six figures as freelancers, we're sailing, you know, we, that's, that's smooth sailing from there. But really, when you think about taxes and insurance and Social Security and retirement and business profits, that money's gone. It's not gone. I mean, there's still money left. But this, it's not anything you're going to like get rich on. or even. And, and I don't mean to say rich, but you're not going to grow wealthy from it. And you're not going to have money to grow your business with if what you're planning for is 100. So it's like you look at that, you look at the principles in the 10X book, which are not, this isn't specific. It's not, oh, I'm sorry, it's not limited only to money. But that's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> so if you look, but thinking about the 10X stuff, if you plan for 100 if you're trying to hit 100, first of all, maybe you hit 100 in the maybe you hit 100 in the first place. That's like hitting all of your goals the entire year. So you're just you're down back to basically the same salary that you would make if you worked a job for someone else. But if you plan for 300,000 or 400 or 5 or even a million, the processes and systems that you have to put in place to get to that look very different than what you have to put in place to get to 100. And if you fail trying to get to a million, you're in a much better place, aren't you, than if you fail trying to get to 100. You'll, you'll have more to work with along the way. And, and surely, and I've seen this true in my own life, when you aim for something much bigger than you think you can get, you end up further along than where you thought you could get in the first place. And, and so those principles, 
it just I you know it's like even even when I was in the mastermind with this group and thinking wow I'm doing really great I look back on it now and I think what was I doing <laughs> like I yeah. was just playing I was just playing even though even though looking back I still come out ahead of most uh, freelancers in the WordPress space mm -hmm. and certainly most women I still come out ahead and still I look back and I go gosh it was it was never going to be very successful with what I was planning because it wasn't big enough. So that was the 10x rule. Um, and the uh, Closer's Survival Guide is like it in that I, th um, I just think we never, I think the majority of folks in our space never really learn how to sell. We never really learn how to move a customer from totally being unaware of us to mm -hmm. um, being really ready to understand the value that we're offering and how that's going to impact their business. And the Closer Survival Guide just it lays out, it goes through every objection <laughs> that someone could give to um, working with you and gives you helps you understand the psychology of what they're really saying when they say that. Like for example, and I'm sure many of us have heard people say these two things. Someone might say, after you tell them your price, well, that's expensive. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, that is expensive. And a lot of times what we hear when someone says that's expensive is we immediately come back with, okay, let me discount my rate for you. When you don't have to do that, like it's not, that's not something that has to be overcome. It's just a statement. It's just a fact. That's expensive. Yes, it is. Things that are valuable are expensive. Move on. You know, you can move. You can agree and move on. Yes, it's expensive and move on. Or like when so, if you're talking to someone and they say, "Well, okay, I need to go and talk to my business partner," or "I need to go talk to my husband and wife." It's not really that they need to go talk to them because they wouldn't be talking to you if they didn't probably have the authority to make that decision themselves. Um, more likely, what they're saying is, "I don't yet trust you, and I need to find a way out of this conversation so I can." go and tell someone else how I'm not ready to make this decision yet. So instead of just saying, okay, well, talk to them and give me a call back tomorrow, you can just say, well, you know, I, I'm sure your husband and wife trust you to make business decisions or you wouldn't have gotten where you are, you know. And, and so beginning to really sort of call out those objections, I don't know, it was, it was just, it's been really powerful for me to uh, listen to, well, I've been listening to audiobook, but I also have it on print. So when I say listen, it's an audiobook. Sure. Um, to to listen to that. That's great points, Angie. Um, we're going to wrap up the audio part of this, but hopefully Angie will agree to spend another 10 minutes, which you'll be able to watch on our YouTube channel, folks, and please subscribe. Or go to the WP Tonic website where there will be extensive notes, links, to all the things that we've discussed in this fascinating interview. Um, just to finish, folks, um, just a little bit of business. Um, please go to iTunes and subscribe to the show. It really helps. And if you're really pumped up of all the fascinating information you've heard from Angie, go and subscribe as well um, and write a really interesting micro email to us in your subscription. The more funnier it is, I might even mention it on the show, folks. You never know, do you? So, Angie, how can, um, before we go on to the last 10 minutes, which we record on video, how can people get hold of you if they're just listening to the podcast? Yeah, so you can email me at Angie at MyNameIsAngie.com. You can find my website at MyNameIsAngie.com, and I'm Angie Meeker on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else also. Now, John Locke, Mr. Kojak, how can people get hold of you, John? <laughs> uh, well, you can find me at my site, which is LockdownDesign.com, and you could follow me on Twitter, Lockdown underscore Jonathan. How do people get a hold of you? Well, they, they um, use my Twitter. T um, we've actually started a WP Twitter, Twitter, which John is managing, and I've been hopeless at. Or you can go to mine at Jonathan Denwood, and uh, I do respond. Um, I've been even hardcore marketers have been astounded by the, the quickness of my response. Uh, or they can go to the website, and um, we'll be posting a lot more content. Over the, next, over the coming months 
all about marketing, online marketing and WordPress, folks. So we're ending this great discussion, but we're continuing for another 10 minutes afterwards. So do go to the YouTube channel, go to the website, and you'll find even more insightful information about email marketing from Angie. See you later, folks. So we're finished the um, audio part of this recording, but we're going to go on with the discussion. So Angie, um, I think that was fascinating, but I really think you the last part was fantastic. But have you got look reflecting back? So many freelancers basically financially and psychologically just get burnt out after two to three years and they just end up working for somebody. Um, is it something, and there's been a lot of discussion on Twitter, um, a few voices raising some concerns of that the WordPress ecosystem just is it's really very hard to make a decent living out of it at the present moment. Got any faults, insights of what I've said? So I think you're right. I think even um, last year for our family was a very hard year and we got sort of to the end of last year and I thought I don't I'm not even gonna do this anymore I thought I'm just done and I'm go I'll go work for someone else and I have done and to be honest and if you follow me on Twitter you know this I have been working for um, Syed at Optin Monster now part-time for some number of months. Oh Angie can I I've been a little bit rude but I just gotta ask you what's it yeah. like to work with the great Syed? I know, right? So I'm. So, you know, he's, I he's, he's, say, only, he's only 25, isn't it? You know, yeah, it's just awful, really. But so he was a great... I met him years ago at years ago at this point. I think honestly, I think he was like eight, 17 or 18 um, <laughs> at the time at our word camp. Um, he came up and spoke at our word camp, and then the next year we had him come up and keynote at our word camp. And I just always remember thinking, if there's any. There's only a few companies in the WordPress space that I could see myself totally leaving my own business to go to work for, and Syed was one of them. And it's because if you've ever met him, he is the most, he's one of the most genuine, driven, and smart people, I think not just in the WordPress space, but I really think in internet marketing. Um, he has accomplished things in internet marketing that you just would not know about him unless you you know you you really take some time to follow him and see what he does, but the the thing I think is really outstanding about Syed and his companies that he um, oversees is that he he is an executing like genius. He the stuff he does is I don't mean to say it's textbook because I feel like that's that makes it sound really basic, but he executes every single day every single day he does the right stuff every single day to get him to his goals and I think that is um I, I think that that's not maybe as normal in the WordPress space as you might think it is um, so as okay so that was Syed all the praise all goodness to Syed now <laughs> he's really he, he is really great to work for and and Thomas also who is um, the co-founder of Optin Monster is really great also oh so. Thomas is great he, um, he was going to come on the show again um, I'm going to have to re Twitter him again and rustle him up to join us again but he's yes, a, fan do it. A, fan a fantastic developer isn't he he is really and um, so you know, as far as people getting burnt out and is there work in the space and things like that, I think I think now looking back that um, there's plenty of there's plenty of room for people to grow in the WordPress space and and become really wealthy in it. Um, I think that the success lies on getting out of the WordPress space. <laughs> I think when you when you get stuck in the mind, you know, especially as word, as marketers who come into WordPress, we get stuck marketing to other WordPress people, and it's when you remove yourself sort of from that bubble, and really begin focusing back on the brick and mortar businesses in our world, or the other internet marketing, or not internet marketing, but the other marketing businesses that need internet marketing. That's that's where the success lies. I mean, uh, otherwise you're marketing to like the one percent. No, oh, man. I don't mean one percent like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been saying that, right? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a great point, and um, but on the other hand, you know, there has been, and we've discussed it on our uh, insightful 
round tables on Saturday, which hopefully at some time you would consider joining us, Angie. Right. Um, um, but over the past few Saturdays, um, there's been discussion about news stories about some substantially um, impressive individuals in the WordPress community saying that they have got the concerns about Automatic becoming the Walmart of WordPress, just kind of sucking up all the energy and buying all the companies up. And who else have you got to sell to? So, you know, and it has come from a few voices that, you know, have a credibility and have credibility in the community so yeah. that's been said you got any reflections about that or do you think you understand it but you don't totally agree with it I think that I think I understand it but I don't totally agree with it I mean the av the average business in your neighborhood and, and when I say average I don't even mean the little tiny ones I mean the small to medium sized ones that have very substantial marketing budgets, they don't care one bit about Automatic. They don't know who Automatic is. They don't care. What they what they want is a relationship with us. They want a relationship yeah. with you, you and me. You know, and, and and again, you know, there's a place in the world for um the real I think for the large enterprise businesses that need an automatic but it's not it's not even the majority of businesses and I think the companies that get wrapped up in automatic you know what get your head out of your butt you know like go get some business and stop whining about how automatics taken all of it because they're not you know if you if you're in like the publishing news space I can understand if that's your niche if that's the thing that you do I can understand being a little bit scared by automatic but you know what? There's nothing stopping your business from going out and doing the same thing. You have all the same. You know, it's like that. Help that. It's funny that Hal Hal Elrod Miracle Morning book. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like I'm not. I have never really been one to do like morning affirmations or anything like that. But there's a really great like um, piece in there in in the affirmations that he says or that he offers, which basically say something like. I have every ability within me to do and be the thing that I think only other people can do and be. There's nothing there's just nothing stopping another company from rising up and and doing great work and bringing in the same sort of revenue that Automatic does, but it's easier to sit around and complain about it than it is to go and do the level of work that Matt's put into Automatic. Or even Jake, you know, you want to look at 10 up and web dev and uh, Alley and all of these big companies, you know, it's easier to complain about it than it is to go do the work. True, um, and it's a bit. And like I say that as like little, little me compared to. You say that out of love. <laughs> I say it out of love. Yes. Our generation, the great philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein once said, "Angie, what comes out your mouth, your language will become what you are." And um, I think there's a lot of truth there. The words that you express and um, regularly will become what you are, so be careful what you express. So, um, that was quite good, folks. It? I was quite impressed myself there, a bit, a little bit of Wickenstein. Um, you do you think yeah. most of the audience even know what Wickenstein, Liquid Wickenstein was, actually, Angie? Nope. No, good, uh, good. I always like to tease my American guests. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a version of mine, Angie, but I just can't resist it. I do love my American cousins, and uh, I am an American, a dual citizenship, but I just can't resist it, Angie. So, uh, so I'm going to leave the last question to um, the intellectual part of this show to my co-host, John. Got a final question, John? Yeah, I got a final question, and, and then after that, I want Angie to tell us about her special promotion before we sign off. Uh, last question, uh, uh, you know, what are, are things that... Uh, you know, you were talking about in the WordPress space, or in, in any space, not even just WordPress space. There's room for everyone. Um, when it and and you talked about previously with the 10x book, you know, it, it's it's a lot of retraining your thoughts um, to reach, you know, higher and to expect more. Um, what do you think like limits people? You know, when it comes to what they're trying to achieve, you know, is is it things like jealousy, envy? Is it things like um, 
being used to working for somebody else? You know, what, what are the things that limit us? Yeah. Dang, that's a good question. So I, you know, I can I can only you speak. Got, got for one myself. second to answer. Oh, <laughs> okay, for my, for oh my gosh, okay, for myself, it is it is really just I'm having to retrain myself that when I get to a blocker, where I think I I to really understand what's behind it. So for myself, in the past, I have said I don't want to own an agency because I don't like managing people. And so for me, I'm having to turn that around and say, do I really not like managing people or do I not think I can manage people? I've done it before and, it, and I was good at it, but it was hard. So what was hard about it in the past that I can learn from that past and, and, and move on through that so that my growth doesn't get stopped by me thinking I can't do that? Because a lot of times we, we stop ourselves that I can't or I don't want to when really there's uh, all of that is it's driven by something that you can get over that you can get through but until you stop and say okay my goal is bigger than my can'ts you'll you'll never try to get through it you'll never try to figure out what's behind that thing that's blocking you i don't i hope that made sense to someone listening but <laughs> made sense to me okay so, it's very good go. to me AG. so um like my how, you know, which we will make sure is prevalent on the post, Angie. And um, what is the special offer that you're going to offer to the listeners? Sure. So um, we're going into the holiday season, and so um, we're we're doing email marketing um, campaigns September through December to help drive revenue for businesses. And for listeners of WP Tonic, if you'll e if you would like to get started or you'd even like information about that, email me Angie at myNameIsAngie.com. And and if you decide to do a project with us, then we're going to offer five hundred dollars off of your first month. Um, for for just WP Tonic listeners, so that's fantastic. We we'll even give it a plug on Saturday, Angie. On the yeah, show. yeah, that's a totally generous offer. I think well. everybody would be, they should take you up on that offer, definitely. Yeah. So yes, sounds Thanks. great. You like how my mic is now like casting a red glow on my I face? Do you think that would uh -huh. suit me, Angie? Do I, no, I need horns, really, don't I? I need, <laughs> I need a glow. I'll be well off, would I? You know, I'll be right. superb, would I? You know. <laughs> Um, I'm getting. I've decided to go full blown English satire on these shows. It's going to get worse, actually. Uh, it's been mellow, but I've decided after listening to you, they're going to get the full English personality, Angie. <laughs> Great. It's going to be hardcore BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, so listeners. Fun. It's Jack and Ori here. Um, you don't. You don't know what the hell I'm talking about here. Or no, Blue Peter. that part I missed. I got everything up to that. But. Blue Peter, Jack and I, radio. This is Radio Four, listeners. It's um, it's it's the children hour of WP Tonic, Jack and Ori, and Blue Peter. Please join us. You have to cover it here. Right, uh, AG, um, this will be on our YouTube channel. Actually, I think the more perverse and entertaining we become, the more. We are actually getting subscribers on the YouTube channel with um, John's help, aren't we, John? A few, yeah. We're doing okay. A few, a few lost souls. Yeah. We've got a big virtual hook that hooks them in. You know, we actually actually persuade them to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's like cricket sometimes, isn't it? You know, it you is hard. If there's anybody out there listening to this. Yeah, yeah you know what? We're, we're, we're on the rebound. We're grinding it out, you know, much like... You know, you are. You know, we're just uh, not quitting. We're just. Uh, yeah. We're not quitting. Climbing through it. You know. Yeah. We're gonna bombard them, bombard <laughs> them with our materials, Angie. Do it. <laughs> I do like anyway. the glow, though. I do like you do as well, Angie, don't you? I actually think I think you get the English humour as well, don't you? A little bit. My husband listens. He only listens to like, or he only watches British TV. I don't know why. He wants well, to live in London again, so. Yeah, well, I don't, um, we had um, Captain Bob on the show as well. I, I call him Captain Bob, Bob WP. And he seemed to like the humour, didn't he, John? He seemed to get it. I, was, I see yeah. him. 
Um, he, d- he didn't know what I was talking about at the end. There, there was a captain um, bird's eye, and I see Bob as a kind of sh- friendly ship's captain with a bottle of scotch in his pocket, and always a glass or two ready for anybody that comes on board the schooner, <laughs> if you understand. Oh, that's uh, funny. Uh, um, you can't easily understand my humour. But I've had some some interviews where they just kind of the eyes just. I just say, uh, yeah. This oh. get larger and larger and larger. And the larger the eyes get, the more English, the more hardcore I get. I just can't resist it. It just encourages uh, you. It does, really. There's kind of something <laughs> to actually shock Americans is delicious, actually. <laughs> I've been reading this, actually. Angie, you've been a great sport. Um, it's been fascinating conversation. We we actually become rather intellectual with your ear assistance. John is, but I'm not too sure about me though. But there we go. But thank You're you, been fun. thank you so much. And um, please consider in the next months coming on our um, Saturday uh, roundtable and interlize it a little bit. Not interlize, it's not such a word. Yeah, definitely, it? definitely. We got some. We we have a lot of good people that kind of. Um, we have kind of like a rotating panel. Uh, just whoever's there, uh, you know, Sally Getch, Kim Shivler, Jackie D'Elia, uh, Morton. Morton, Morton shows up sometimes, uh, David Lietta, um Ryan Jackson. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, do we, yeah, show up. Bridget, Bridget was on last week, Bridget Willard, so definitely just, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll do, do it. Do you think she understood my humor? I think her eyes were widening a bit, weren't they, John? Mine? No, Bridget. Oh, Bridget. Yeah, they'll get Oh, I think in. she did. Yeah, I think she did understand you. I think she just yeah. enjoys it, doesn't she? The more, <laughs> the more hardcore I get, she actually there's a there's a kind of naughty side of her, isn't it? No, no, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, <laughs> All right, man. Thank See you, you later, so much, folks. Andy. Thank Bye, you. So You're See welcome. You Have a good day, guys. All right. Thanks. Can you just? Pop off, Angie. I just want a quick word with John. Yes, I'll you. leave. You can leave. <laughs> oh, no, I say like Bye. the Queen, don't I? I say like the bloody <laughs> Queen. You can leave there. You can. You are dismissed. There you go. Um, that was okay, wasn't it? That wasn't too bad. Pretty good. So you know, I'm just you know just survival. I should be aiming to be a millionaire. Is that it, John? What was it? Say it again. I'll better, better stop the broadcast, actually. That might help.